Okay, getting into lesson 5.6, we're going to be simplifying square roots today. And this is something that we're going to continue to do really for the remaining part of chapter 5 for all of the remaining sections we're going to cover. Uh, here's how you can do uh, a, a simplification of radicals. Take a look at the number inside 18. We're going to do a prime factorization. Uh, think of two numbers that multiply to 18. You could say 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. We're looking for the primes. We're looking for numbers that are going to multiply to 18 uh, that are divisible only by themselves in 1. So a 2 times 3 times 3. Some of you might have thought, well, wait a minute. When I think about numbers multiplying to 18, I'm thinking of 3 times 6. But look at 6. This is 2 times 3 as well. No matter which two numbers you begin with, the prime factorization will always arrive at the same basic prime factorization. So, in other words, 18 is a 2 times 3 times 3. Now, when we're simplifying square roots, we're looking for two of the same factor. We're looking for pairs of numbers. And, in fact, when we find a pair of numbers, what we can do is take that number outside of the radical what remains is the 2 we only have one of those and we are done let's take a look at another problem example 2 for 32 there are many different ways you can multiply to 32 some kids will think about 2 times 16 you can do that 16 is 4 times 4 but each 4 is really 2 times 2. Again, prime numbers are numbers like 2, 3, 5, 7. These are the numbers that are divisible only by themselves in 1. And we would like to have a prime factorization, just have primes multiplying to 32. The way you do that is, of course, having 5 2's multiplied in succession. Now, if you would have started off with 32 equals 4 times 8, uh, you'd arrive at the exact same factorization. But look what we have here. We have a pair of 2's, two twos. Here is another pair of 2's. So out's going to come a 2 from this first pair. Out's going to become another 2 from the other pair. But whenever we're right next to each other in algebra, that implies multiplication. 2 times 2 is a 4. Our final answer would be 4 times the square root of 2. Let's continue. Take a look at 45. 45, most kids think of, is probably 9 times 5. But 9 is 3 times 3. And this would be our prime factorization, 3 times 3 times 5. Here I have a pair of 3's. So pull a 3 out. The only thing left inside of the radical is that 5. We are done. Now, uh, moving on here to some arithmetic, some multiplication. Uh, here's a neat way to do this. Of course, with radical 2 times radical 10, you can certainly multiply 2 times 10 to get 20, and then simplify radical 20. However, let's take a look at 10. 10 is 2 times 5. So this would become radical 2 times 5. I really strongly suggest that you do prime factorization early on for each uh, term here. Then combine them. You're going to have to do the prime factorization anyway. Why not do it while the numbers are smaller? And look, out comes a 2. Inside you still have a 5, radical 5. Let's take a look at 21. 21 is 3 times 7. 35 is 5 times 7. So for this problem, we have 3 times 7 inside representing our radical 20. Over here is 5 times 7 inside the radical. Put them all together, you'll have a 3 times a 5 times a 7 times a 7. Well, look, out comes a 7, but we still have a 3 times 5 inside. That's radical 15 then. And look at that. Don't multiply 21 times 35. It's really not worth your time to do that. 
Look, for number 6, uh, 15 is really 3 times 5, so we could begin to look at that radical in that light. Join your two radicals together. I'll have a 3, a 3, and a 5. But would you look at that? A pair of 3's, out comes a 3. We still have a 5 inside. We are done. Okay, as we continue on, for number 7, uh, radical 5 over 2, you could write this as the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 2. This is not considered simplified because we cannot have a square root, or any radical for that matter, in the denominator. So what we need to do is find a way to get out, get that radical 2 out of the denominator. What we've been talking about all of this lesson, though, is that you need two of the same factor to come out of a radical. So I'm going to multiply by a clever form of 1. Radical 2 over radical 2 is a 1. Why am I choosing to multiply the top and the bottom by radical 2? Well, look down below. Now you have two 2's. That will allow you to pull a 2 out of the square root. There is nothing left inside the square root. And most importantly, there's no square root at all left behind. Look up on top. Radical 5 times radical 2 is radical 10. Number 8, it's really the same thing. This would become radical 7 over radical 3. The problem is seeing this root 3 down below. Uh, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by that. Radical 7 times radical 3 is radical 21. Down below, radical 3 times radical 3 is just a 3. I have 2 of the same factor. Another comment, it's so tempting for students sometimes to try to divide 21 by 3 to get 7, but we're not allowed to do that. This is not 21 divided by 3, it's the square root of 21. 21 uh, has to be dealt with inside that root first. Let's take a look at example 9. Uh, this is really the square root of 25 over the square root of uh, 64. But both of these numbers are very, very important. They're uh, perfect squares. And we've talked about perfect squares before. Uh, the square root of 25, well, what number times itself is 25? You'd have a 5. In other words, here's your prime factorization, 5 times 5. Now, down below, if you did a prime factorization for 64, it would get very, very uh, long and spread out. It would take you just a little while to do that. But think about it, 8 times 8 is 64, so very simply you could just pull out an 8. All right, moving on. Uh, for number 9, solve by taking square roots. Our goal is first to get x squared by itself. And to do that, we're going to minus a 1, and 13 minus 1 is 12. I'm going to take a square roots plural on both sides. We're always going to have a positive and a negative square root to consider. And uh, the left side will have an x. Over here we'll have plus or minus square root of 12. Let's break our 12 down. 12 is 4 times 3, or 2 times 2 times a 3. So uh, what we have nice and simply, is plus or minus 2 times 2 times 3. Well, again, look for pairs. Here's a pair. We could pull out a 2, and we're left here with our radical 3. For the sake of time, we only have a 15-minute time limit using this program. Let's jump over to number 11. Number 11, again, solve for uh, y. What we'll do first is get our y squared alone. To be able to do that, we'll divide by 3. Uh, next, we will take our square roots. But again, when you are taking square roots, you're always going to have a positive and a negative. There will be uh, two answers. Uh, so you'll have y is equal to plus or minus radical 8. But look at 8. 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. Uh, what we have is plus or minus 2 times 2 times 2. 
Well, again, we're looking for pairs of factors. I see two twos, so I'll pull a two out. I'll have a square root of two remaining. Okay, we do have some problems on the other side of our notes. And uh, very, very quickly, we can come to number 12. Number 12 is different because we have an x minus 5 quantity squared. Let's just get x minus 5 quantity squared by itself. Divide both sides by 2. And uh, we'll have x minus 5 quantity squared is equal to 6. We're going to take our square roots, plural. We'll have a plus minus. The square root of a square here is going to cancel out to just x minus 5. Look at the 6. The 6 very simply is 2 times 3. There are no doubles. Without any doubles, we don't have to worry about simplifying. It, it already is simplified. One more thing that we're going to do is very simply add a 5 to both sides. And we'll have 5 plus or minus the square root of 6. Last problem, number 13. Getting rid of the 1 7th is our first goal. And uh, to get rid of a fraction, we can multiply both sides by that least common denominator. Uh, very nicely, we'll just have x plus 6 quantity squared is equal to... Now, you could say 56 if you'd like, and many kids do. Or you could leave the 7 times 8 right there. Uh, knowing that you're going to have to break it down. Either way, it, you'll get the same answer. You'd have x plus 6 is equal to plus or minus radical 56. But like I said, this is why, honestly, you don't even have to multiply it together. Look, you would need to find two numbers that multiply to 56. And all of a sudden, you'd realize... Well, wait a minute. I need that 7 times 8 anyway to factor that down into the prime factorization. This is going to be plus or minus. It looks like we have three 2's multiplied in succession and then a 7. Well, I see a pair of 2's right here. So out comes a 2. I have a 2 and a 7 multiplied together. This would be a radical 14. Wow, we are almost done. One more thing we need to do, we have to get rid of this addition of a 6. So we'll subtract a 6, or equivalently, add a negative 6 to both sides. We would have negative 6 plus or minus 2 radical 14. So these are the types of problems we're doing in section 5.6. Good luck with this. Pay especially close attention to this. We're going to need all of these skills in 5.7 where we're going to deal with some little twists to what we can see with the radical. Well, good luck. Bye-bye.